spurious ones. Well, this morning in studio with us, we're going to have a chat with Tony Leon, who is the former DA leader and also former ambassador to Brazil on his, uh, his new book and on the ever interesting subject of the politics in South Africa. So nice to see you. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Leanne, and good morning to you and all the viewers on Morning Live. Argentina. Yeah. Ours the ambassador. Oh my God, did they, well, it's next door. It was in the right neighbourhood anyway. They wrote Brazil. You see now, they make me look They bad. want to promote me. Of course it's Argentina. I mean, yes. you wrote a book about it. We I spoke did. about it. We even spoke about the, the president did. of Argentina. Yes, and your Cristina views on Fernandez her. de Kirchner. <laughs> exactly. Let's talk about this book now. I mean, this is now your third book. Is that yes, right? Yes, that's right. You're turning into a literary genius. Well, is I this what you do in your spare time? No, we're hardly a genius. But, I, you know, I just this book in particular, Opposite Mandela, I thought was timeless because a huge literature on Mandela, quite obviously, such a big figure in our lives and the lives of so many people in the world. But no one had written from the lens or yes. through the lens of being, what it was it like to be in opposition to Mandela? Absolutely. And yet have an engaged relationship. And this book very much depicts that, not just uh, all the stories there, a lot of stories there, but also some of the structure of how Mandela ran his presidency so that he didn't just look, he wasn't just nice to people on his side, but he reached out beyond the government into the opposition and there were some extraordinary moments going right back from when we first met each other in August 1992 when he invited me to his house in Houghton for dinner yeah. right through to after he left the presidency when we had many discussions and uh, many many other parties and, and events in between and, and also some disagreements because you know as Mandela was the first to say I'm not a saint yes. he was a very engaged partisan politician who could reach beyond the boundaries of party and touch so many different situations. And that's, I think, one of the reasons that this country moved from where it was to where it is today. Yeah. Let's, let's have a look at a couple of the pictures. We've been showing them while you've been talking, and perhaps you can give us a bit of explanations. Sure. Uh, here we go. Where was this? Well, so this is in uh, 1992, and uh, Mandela moved into the area called Houghton, Johannesburg, where I was the, po uh, the member of parliament. Yeah. Very young there. I had a lot of hair. You did? And, you look very uh, young so he, he, I, I took him a chocolate cake. And I didn't expect any response. He said, well, perhaps you'll come to one of our meetings. So he rang me. Yeah. And he said, perhaps you, one or two, one or two of you DP chaps of the Democratic Party come for dinner. So he invited us. And there's Zach de Beaux, the party leader. Yeah. Uh, who died, actually, long before Mandela in 1999. Yeah. And me and uh, Madiba. And that picture was taken one of our first state dinners just after Mandela had become president. And uh, he would always, not just invite, that normally happens, but he would always make a point during one of those dinners of calling me up <coughs> to the podium and introduce me to the head of state. I think that was the dinner for uh, John Major or Francois Mitterrand. And he'd say, I want you to meet the man who gives me all my trouble. <laughs> I uh, love that. And, and that picture was at my 40th birthday, uh, oh my. Uh, which is in December 1996. And there was my father, uh, Ray, who's actually alive still. He's 89. Oh, oh that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, living in Durban. And there, of course, me and Mandela and my brother Peter. Yes. He's still very much around. And uh, Mandela came along with Mangasutu Butlezi and Tito Mbaweni, who yes. instantly launched the book last night in Hyde Park in Johannesburg. And he made a speech. And this is an interesting picture. So this is the day after I got married to my wife, Michal, and actually the opening of the Jewish Museum in Cape Town, yes, and we went along, Michal, my bride and I, and there she's greeting Mandela. But two years before, I'd even proposed to my wife at one of these functions, Mandela came up to her and said, when are you going to say yes to this young man? <laughs> he had a fantastic interest in my, in my status, and he said, you know, it's high time you got married, yes. and well, eventually I took his advice. Well, and you, we do know that Mateva loved the ladies, so he I He mean, certainly did, and I reflect he, that in this book, and, and you know, I actually use the term about him, a term you'd hate, that he was seductive, not just to women, yes. but, and, but in the sense that he, would, he was so charming, and that charm had a purpose, whether it was to make you like him or get you to persuade you to a point of view. So I imagine if, if you were a woman in the sites, it was pretty devastating. Exactly, yeah. it would be. So it's, it's interesting when we look at these photographs, and as much as, as much as he would introduce you as the man that, that gives me trouble in Parliament and opens his mouth, and, and, and yes. you know, that's what democracy and Parliament is all about, as we've been uh, shown lately. Um, but at the same time, he was at your 40th birthday party, he was at key events in your me in hospital life. when I was ill. He, he was there, sort of almost like a constant... Uh, presence at, at some critical mileposts in, in my life, obviously, which was 
much shorter than his life yeah. at, at that stage and now still um, only in my 50s. But what's very interesting about Nelson Mandela and, and Parliament and French and Waller, who was the Speaker of Parliament during the Mandela presidency when I was there as well, she said, you know, he always wore a suit to Parliament. Very interesting point, because you always associate Medib in those batik-style shirts that he so famously wore. And what she was really saying, he had enormous respect for institutions. Yes. So I think one of the things that President Mandela was trying to do was to show, look, we actually, it's opposition and government. It's not just one side, it's all sides. And when we have a common endeavor, we must uh, work together, but we can also disagree. Yeah. Tony, I'm going to ask you to stay on because there's no way I can end this interview here. There's just too much to speak about, especially now what's happening in the DA in politics. Sure. And, and a little bit more, a question I really want to ask you. I mean, we always talk about Mandela and that, that incredible man. But there was a difficult side to him as well. Oh, and I certainly. want to talk about that. You can't sure. answer now because we've got to keep these viewers waiting to find out <laughs> what was the difficult side of Mandela in Parliament and in politics. Can you imagine?